Iran shot down an unmanned U.S. military drone like this one. That is not in question. What is clear, um, where the two sides disagree, is where the drone was flying at the time. A U.S. official tells CNN that the aircraft was operating over the Strait of Hormuz in international airspace. Tehran counters that the drone was destroyed after it violated Iranian airspace. Now, it comes after the U.S. Navy said that a mine allegedly used to attack oil tankers last week bears a striking resemblance to others displayed at Iranian military parades. And Tehran denies it was involved in any attacks on tankers. Now, we will have a live report from Tehran in a moment. But first, Sam Kiley joins us from Korfa Khan. It's a town on the Gulf of Oman in the UAE and close to where those tinker attacks took place. And Sam, uh, first let's talk about what happened with this drone. <clears throat> exactly what was shot down and where? Well, finally, there is an agreement between Iran and the United States. Firstly, that a drone was shot down. And secondly, uh, over what kind of a drone? They now both agree uh, that it was a global hawk, as effectively an unmanned spy plane. Now, the dispute is whether it was shot down, as the Iranians say, over Iranian territory in Iranian airspace, which would have inverted, in inverted commas, make it a legitimate target, or whether it was in international airspace, which makes it an act of aggression as far as the United States and, indeed, international law would have it. That dispute uh, will be resolved when uh, the location of that drone's a position when it was shot down is identified but that is the argument that's going on in terms of what has been happening in the skies above this region on the water though there's no doubt at all about the location of two vessels that were hit a week ago by what the United States is insisting was Iranian made mines and they demonstrated some of these uh, some of the evidence behind uh, this claim uh, in a, during a visit which I paid uh, to them uh, just uh, yesterday. This is my report. An American naval craft fast approaches a Japanese ship allegedly attacked with an Iranian mine. Gunboat diplomacy. The US taking the media to see the damage done to the Kukuka Courageous. This hole just over my shoulder, the Americans say it was caused with an Iranian-built limpet mine. They can't say, however, with any total certainty that it was put there by the Iranians. Nonetheless, it blew through both the outer hull and the inner hull of this ship, penetrating the fuel tank area. Some experts have said that that is deliberate. It was a sign that whoever planted this mine knew what they were doing, that they wanted to send a signal but not cause a disaster. The signal is hands off Iran. The disaster would be all out war. US naval experts strongly believe that the mine here and one removed by Iranian commandos from this same ship were Iranian. The US Navy recovered a magnet from one limpet mine and fragments of another, which has led them to this. What I can tell you is that the limpet mine that was used in the attack is distinguishable and it is also strikingly bearing a resemblance to Iranian mines that have already been publicly displayed in Iranian military parades. Since the U.S. withdrew from the deal intended to reduce sanctions against Iran in return for it suspending its nuclear program and, in fact, imposed even heavier sanctions, tensions have steadily increased, especially at sea. The U.S. sent a carrier group to the region to signal power and discourage Iranian retaliation. In May, though, four ships were mysteriously damaged in Emirati waters by explosions. Then the Kakuka Courageous and the Front Altair, a Norwegian-owned tanker, were both attacked last week. There have been more mysterious attacks on land, most recently in Basra, where a building housing foreign oil companies, including ExxonMobil, was hit by a rocket. The U.S. has blamed Iran for many similar attacks. Iran denies all allegations of using violence to signal its anger over the U.S. sanctions, but it backs many militias capable of launching such assaults. The commander of its Revolutionary Guard Corps has warned that Iran has missiles that could destroy an aircraft carrier. The U.S. Secretary of State insisting that the U.S. can't pursue diplomacy we can't do that without making sure that we have the capability to respond if Iran makes a bad decision. 
if it makes a decision to go after an American or an American interest or to uh, continue to proliferate its nuclear weapons program. So far, Iran has done neither. But it does want U.S. sanctions lifted. America is saying no, leaving the gunboats to circle amid spiraling tensions. Now, Christy, I think what we can probably deduce from all of this is certainly a degree of signalling of capability from the Iranians, but there's been no uh, parallel response from the United States in terms of any signal that they're prepared to dial down on those very heavy sanctions being posed on the Iranian economy. Christy? Yeah, the sanctions, the accusations of tanker attacks at sea, this U.S. drone being shot down, tensions in the region are indeed, as you put it, spiraling. Sam Kiley reporting live. Thank you. And let's go straight to Tehran. Fred Plykin joins us from the Iranian capital. And Fred, we have these conflicting accounts from the U.S. and Iran about this unmanned yeah. drone, where it was when it was shot down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There certainly are very conflicting reports. It was quite interesting to see because the Iranians came out uh, for their standards really, really quickly after all of this happened. Uh, the Iranians are saying it happened in the early morning hours. Now, they say that this drone took off sometime actually uh, shortly past midnight. Local time was then circling around the area. Now, the Iranians say that it turned off or, as they put it, masked some of their identification equipment on board, obviously not wanting to be seen, the Iranians say, uh, by Iranian detection equipment. And then they say that it violated Iranian airspace sometime this morning and was shot down south of the Strait of Hormuz. Now, um, I think Sam was already talking about the U.S., of course, has a very different take on things. They say that the drone uh, was shot down over international waters in the Strait of Hormuz, and that's why the U.S. says that this was an unprovoked attack. Now, the Iranians, nevertheless, of course, very angry, they say, about what happened. The unit that shot this drone down is Iran's most elite military unit, the Revolutionary Guard Corps, and the head of the Revolutionary Guard Corps said that uh, the shooting down of this drone is a very clear message to the United mm. States that Iran is drawing a red line. Let's listen into what he had to say. We have no intention to fight with any countries, but we are completely ready for war. What happened today was an obvious sign of this accurate message. So the Iranians saying that they would be ready if something happens, they would be ready for a war, but it's certainly not something that they want. That really, Christy, also echoes a lot of the things that we've heard from other Iranian officials as well. And also really quick, one thing that I wanted to add is that the Iranians have over the past couple of weeks showcased what they say are increased and more capable air defense systems that they've developed. In fact, just about, let's say a little over a week, maybe close to two weeks ago, they did showcase a new air defense system that they have developed. It's not clear whether or not this was involved in this, but it's certainly something that also sends a message to the U.S. and to other countries as well, Christy. Absolutely. There's been a flexing of military muscle on both sides, Iranian and American. Fred Plekin reporting live from mm. Tehran. Thank you.